Hello, and welcome to the PyEZ Using the Juniper Junos Facts Library Learning Byte. In this Learning Byte, we've got really two goals. The first one is to show you how to use the Juniper PyEZ container. It's a great way to quickly get up and, up and running and test out scripts, um, PyEZ scripts. The second objective is to show you about the Juniper Junos Facts Library. Um, it's used in a lot of our courseware um, and in a lot of beginning scripts, but there's a lot of stuff you can do with this Facts Library that you might not be aware of uh, that make it extremely useful. So that's kind of where we're going. So to use the Docker container, that's really an easy to get up and running. I've got my lab set up using Ubuntu. And so to install Docker, it's as simple as issuing the sudo apt-get install docker command. Um, once you install Docker, then you need to get the container, pull it down from the Docker hub. To do that, it's the simple docker pull juniper pi EZ that you see here on your screen, the second bullet point. Once you've pulled down that container, it's ready to go. Then, to actually run a script, you use the docker run the IT option, which means interactivity, um, and so it's actually going to use that Docker command. The RM is an option that says, hey, once you're done running this command, go ahead and shut down and delete this container. And you can also optionally give that container a name. And then the V option here says, hey, rather than having to copy our scripts into the container, we're going to actually map our present working directory, PWD. We're going to map that present working directory into the scripts folder inside the container. So the idea is, is that if you run this Docker command inside the folder where you have your scripts, they're automatically going to be inside that Docker container. And then this is the name of the container we're running, Juniper Pi EZ. And then you would place the name of the script after that. And, and I'm going to show you how to do that. It's going to be part of our demonstration. But it's that easy to get a working environment up um, with Pi EZ. And you can do the same thing on CentOS and other uh, Linux operating systems as well. All right, so the Juniper.Junos fax module is really probably the first one anybody learning automation learns um, because it goes in and automatically pulls out different properties and information about the device and it really you can pull up to 35 different pieces of information and if you do a search on the juniper.junos facts module it'll pull up what all of those are in the documentation so to see all of those the most common call is to make a call to this facts function all right but if you want to see specific pieces of information, you can actually call that out using the hostname command. All right. And again, to see which ones are available, if you go do a search it's for the juniper.junos facts module, um, it'll show a list of all of these different ones that you can pull out. And so that's kind of the introduction. Now let's go in and let's see how it all works, how it all puts together. Um, what I've got is I have an Ubuntu um, VM, and in this Ubuntu VM, I've installed Microsoft Code. That's their free Visual Studio type editor. Um, it works really well in Linux. Um, it's probably my favorite editor for doing this kind of coding now. And I've also got a have a, a, a VSRX. And I've got this in my home lab environment. They're both virtualized. And, and so what I've done here in my Ubuntu is I have this script here. that, And it's a basic script to probably about as simple as you're going to get for connecting to a Juniper device. Now, on the Juniper device, if I switch over to the Juniper device really quick, what you want to worry about on the device is this show system services, and you want to make sure you have netconf ssh set up. Without that, you're not going to be able to connect to the device. 
So we've got that, so our Juniper device is prepared. And let's switch back to our development environment. And in the development environment, our first line of code here is standard for, again, this, this learning byte is for beginners. So I'm kind of starting at the very beginning. We've got the shebang here, the pound and the exclamation point, and the path to our Python 3 interpreter. Now this will also work with Python 2 if that's what you've got installed. Um, some of the, I think this first script's gonna work for both of them. I think some of the later ones we look at is probably going to be more specific to Python 3, uh, but very similar. So we got, you have to make sure you import the juniper.junos library and import device class. Now, this with statement at the beginning allows us to connect up to the Juniper device without having to open the connection and close the connection. The with this is called the with context, and it allows you to connect to the device without specifically opening the connection and closing the connection. It's very useful. So we say device and we say the host, we have an IP address. We could, if your DNS is, is running, just put in the host name and we put in the username and password. This is not as secure as using a certificate and in later learning bytes and in the course, uh, you know, the our automation courses, we show you how to use certificates. All right, and the typical way this done is to just print dev.fax. So it's going to go out to the device, retrieve the fax and print them out. All right, so if we go to the command line and this file is called fax1.py so if I go to the command line, and here is that same docker run command I showed you in the slide presentation. And so it's docker run with the interactivity. We're going to remove the container after it's done. We're going to map our present working directory to the scripts directory. And we're running the Juniper PyEZ container, and we're going to pass to it this fax1.py. So we hit enter, it runs. It takes it just a minute just because it's bringing up that container and then passes it to it. But like you saw, it's not very long. This is the default of what you get when you run that, um, yeah, that, that fax function. Not really well organized. So there's some things we can do to make that prettier. I've got another script here, so to save in typing, really all I've done is added in what is called this import pprint or pretty print and it enables you to print in a more pretty fashion and so we have pprint.dev.fax now we can do that and let me show you what it does differently so let's go back to our command line and this time we're just going to change this to fax2 and it's going to run it again. What pretty print does is it says, oh, I recognize this as being a Python dictionary. So let's try and give it some structure. And now you can see all of the different pieces of information that you can get through this pretty print and through this fax module. All right, you can see the uptime here. You can see the model, the status. Lots of different interesting pieces of information. And you may not want all that information. You might be just looking for very specific pieces of information. And if you are, you can customize that as well. And our courses don't go into this much depth, but I thought it was a really interesting application. Now, here we're still um, using the juniper.junos import device. Um, just I don't think we need the pretty print anymore because we're just going to use a print statement, but our connection is still the same. Nothing's changed there, but we're using print. But as part of Python 3, we now have this what's called fprint, and you can do this in Python 2, but Python 2 doesn't have this fprint. What fprint does is it makes it easier to put in what it is your text as well as this devdocfax all on the same line. And so it's more intuitive as far as, a, in my opinion, from a programmer perspective of being able to combine text and variables together. So it's gonna print out host name, it's gonna run dev.fax, and it's going to pull just the host name field 
out of that big Python dictionary of facts. The next line is going to pull out the serial number. The next line is going to pull out the version. And the last one is this, notice there's two sets of square brackets in the dev.facts down here at the bottom line. First, it's going to go and pull out the RE0, which stands for Routing Engine 0. And that is a dictionary in and of itself. Nested within that dictionary is another dictionary that has this field of last reboot reason. And so if you just try and pull out last reboot reason, it's going to say, oh, I can't find it. Well, it can't find it because it's nested within another dictionary, the RE0. And so to pull out a field that's nested within another field, you have to do a square bracket nested with this another square bracket here, or next to another square bracket. And you'll see these forward slash ends at the beginning here and at the begins of the lines. These are just simple ways to insert a new blank line, a new hard return, if you will. So let's go try this one and show you the return on this. Come back to our command line. And I'm going to hit enter a few times. Let's uh, clear it and run this time number three. going to run it and now it's just going to pull out the pieces of information and show the ones that we wanted. To me if I were writing a script I, this is much more useful if I wanted to know about you know see certain pieces of information about a particular device. So I hope this is useful for you. To take this a step further what you can do is you can in your Python script is you can pass in maybe an IP address or a whole series of IP addresses and then run this script against all of the, those different devices. And so that would be the next step and take this learning byte further. But that's for another day. So thank you for being here. And let me see if I can get back to our slide here. And I think, yeah. So to sum it up, hopefully at the end of this, now you have feel confident in being able to download the container and use it. And then maybe a few tricks on using this Junos.facts PyEasy library. Thank you, and that's it. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.